in and tell them that we went to the drive-in. We have a bit of an odd one for you guys and gals today. Based off the 1951 post-apocalyptic end-of-the-world book called Day of the Triffids by John Wayham, The Day of the Triffids is a science fiction horror movie. It was released on April 27th, 1963. This one had two directors, Stephen Skelly and Freddie Francis, and was released by Monogram Pictures, The Rank Organization. The movie begins with a science class backstory explanation. At least they're getting it out the way early with this one. Triffidus Celestis, brought to Earth on the meteorites during the day of the Triffids. Title screen and opening credits. After that, we find out that there is a meteor shower happening all over the world, like nothing we have ever seen before. Over to the local hospital, we meet our lead man, Bill Mason, played by Howard Kell. He just had eye surgery, so he unfortunately can't watch the meteor shower. Dr. Soames, played by Erwin Roberts, says he should be good in a couple of days. Cut over to an isolated lighthouse where Tom and Karen Goodwin are studying marine life, like stingrays. Tom is played by Kiernan Moore, and Karen is played by Janet Scott. Tom has a bit of a drinking problem, and he wants out of this lighthouse. He says, f*** it, Karen, let's get out of here. She agrees, probably because she doesn't want to deal with his drunk ass, but she says they can't leave until the next boat comes to get them. So they're stuck there until that happens. While all this is going on with the eye operation and the drunk biologist, this poor fellow right here, played by Ian Wilson, is about to experience the effects of these meteors. The next day, Bill wakes up ready to have his bandages taken off, but no one is around. He says, all right, I'll do it myself. He goes to explore the hospital, and we get a lot of Walking Dead vibes here. He bumps into Dr. Soms, who's acting a little funny. He has Bill run some optical tests on him to see how his eyes are working, and it turns out they're not working too good. The doctor seems to think this is because of the meteor shower. Bill might be the only person actually in London that can see right now. He asks him to go get something out of his desks, and that's when he goes to... Ah, oh, here it is. Back at the lighthouse, Tom and Karen wonder where that relief ship is at. What comes over the radio is that everyone in England is blind who watched the meteor shower. Look out. Repeat. The entire population of England appears to be afflicted with blindness as a result of watching the meteorite shower last night. And now, they also have these deadly plants to worry about. All of England appears to be infested with a strange new plant that can inflict a fatal sting. It is also rumored that this plant can uproot itself and move about. If you are blind, stay indoors. Blindness. Men killing plants. I'm not drunk, am I? Wish you were. We all do, man. We all do. Back over in 28 days later, Bill leaves the hospital and walks across the city in distress. Honestly, this is a pretty creepy scene with everyone just aimlessly walking around because they can't see. The city is just falling apart. He rescues his orphan girl named Susan from a train crash. She is played by Janine Fay, who actually played the young girl in the horror of Dracula. Man, I love those Hammer films. I gotta get to doing one of those. So we figure out that he's a Navy man, and he decides to take her back to his boat. That's where he's been headed this whole time, actually. They jack a car and head to wherever his boat is. They get stuck in the mud along the way, and get attacked by the deadly plants they've heard about. These crawling plant monsters are actually pretty scary if you ask me. The sound they give off is kind of bone chilling too. These guys also look a lot better than the monster from the creeping tear. 
I know that one was an alien, but these plants also kind of remind me of the plant monster from Ultraman. So they get to his ship and go figure. The whole crew is blind and no one is on the boat. They get a distress call from a liner at sea with the whole crew and passengers on board who have been blinded. And then I think we see Japan on fire and then plane in the air, which you can imagine is going to go pretty bad. The pilot, is he blind too? Blind? Oh, don't be silly, he's perfectly all right. Blind? 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 Blind?
They find a working truck. Then about this church with more survivors. We meet Louis and Teresa Del Vega, played by Jeffrey Matthews and Gigi Hauser. Unfortunately, they are both blind, but are expecting a baby, and they need their help. Louis has the unfortunate task of letting to know that the naval base was abandoned. Louis says the people at the place got away on a sub, but his radio crapped out, and that's all he knows. Bill gets the radio working and picks up a signal that says tomorrow is the last time the sub will be picking up survivors. Bill repairs the electrical fence around the house just in time, too. Fence doesn't seem to help too much, so Bill gets an idea. Something hotter. Next morning, they discover that sound attracts these things. So Bill piles everyone, including the family, into a car. He takes off in the other direction, so the plants follow him. The others reach the sub. Just before, <gasps> there's Bill. He makes it just in time. The end, oh wait. We forgot about Tom and Karen. They are still hard at work when the plants break into their lab. Tom discovers that seawater actually kills them. Kind of odd this late in the movie, but hey, okay. They're attracted by sound, and they can get killed by seawater. Interesting. The ending monologue pretty much tells us that the world is going to try to fight back using seawater. Okay, cool. Now the end. This movie really makes you wonder, what if the whole world was blind? What would you do? How would you survive? I get a lot of The Last of Us vibes from this movie. The plants make a kind of creepy sound as they move, almost like a moped as it's running out of gas. The movie has a really high body count between the plane crashes and the house being attacked by the convicts. The only thing I would really change about this movie is flop the ending. I would have had Karen and Tom wrap up and then the others get to the sub. Feels like more of a happy ending, but hey, that's just me. Do I recommend this one? Yeah, give it a try. It's kind of crazy and kind of creepy and kind of fun. Get some beers and some pizzas and enjoy the day of the Triffids.